Hello, everybody, and welcome back. It's me, Jake, the voice behind Break the Mold Studios Equine Art, and I am here with you today to show you another speed sculpting video. Um, these are always highly requested by people, and I got a really interesting ask on my Instagram a little bit back. Um, that talks about uh, what are my favorite tools in Blender. So I thought I'd share these here. You guys can pause and look at those before you go into the rest of the video and you can identify um, which tools I'm using at which times. Um, unlike a lot of my other videos, I started this one right at the beginning. Um, I missed like the first two minutes of fiddling because my computer crashed and it was being an asshole. <laughs> but um, here I'm showing the process of how I begin a horse. Um, I started in the object mode um, with the base sphere that I always get, excuse me, uh, from the sculpting mode. If, if you start in sculpting, you start with the base sphere. Uh, but if you go into object mode, you can add more objects. Um, you can see here I'm fiddling with trying to make part of the leg out of a tube, and I eventually just scrap that and just uh, drag with the snake tool on here instead um, because it's I, I still haven't figured out how to mirror objects exactly if I copy them um, so I just ended up dragging the legs instead of making them out of tubes um, but what I've done here is I took two spheres and one cone or uh, cylinder mesh and I made them into the base body shape of the horse that I'm sculpting right here. And I start with um, the reference on the left. What I'm working on is a um, stock horse, I either quarter horse, uh, paint Appaloosa, um, weanling filly uh, is what I'm working on. Her name is Big Booty Judy. <laughs> and I'm very proud of that name. Um, I've wanted to do a stock horse for a long time. Uh, I grew up around quarter horses. Um, they were really the only horses that I interacted with, and uh, I love them. They're they're really good all around horses. They're they're useful in almost anything. I've even seen them do dressage and things like that. Even though they don't go to the higher levels, you know, they are kind of a you know jack of all trade horse. <laughs> Um, anyway, not to wax philosophical about breeds of horses, um, but you can see that I'm starting to get the base shape of the body down. Um, I like to start by getting a good base shape of the body without the legs and without the neck and the head on there because I feel like if you start out with the wrong proportions on the body, then the rest of your horse will end up with the wrong proportions as well. Um, so that's just how I start out. Um, here you can see that I started with the little leg stumps. Um, I pull those out to get the like top shape so I can fix everything around it. Um, and then I'm going to take the, uh, the snake tool and drag and pull. But after I do the snake tool, I'm going to have to remesh because the, um, polygons on the leg parts that I pull will will get really stretched and wide and you won't be able to add detail into them anymore because they'll get all kind of crunchy looking. Um, so that's what I will be doing in a minute. I got a lot of requests to do another one of these videos and um, I really enjoy showing the sculpting process. Uh, it's just the talking and adding to it <laughs> that makes me nervous. Um, I don't like to film and do audio unless nobody else is home, so I've had to wait to get to this point um, where I can do this. Um, and uh, I really, really enjoy working on stock horse types. As you can see, um, the big motivation for me doing this sculpt was to be able to study the really unique muscle shapes. Um, and they get better than where they are at at the moment. It takes a lot of looking at things from different angles and adding in the correct creases in, in different places to get the musculature looking correct. 
Um, thankfully on this piece, I'm not going to do a really wild pose. Um, she's just kind of going to be standing with her front legs a little crossed and looking behind her when I'm finished. Um, so I just have to worry about the shape of the muscles um, at a standing position, which is a lot easier to do than if you're doing a specific pose because um, you don't really have to worry about finding exact references that show that exact pose and the way the muscles work. Because if, if you get the musculature wrong, um, that really takes you out of the whole sculpture. You, you just look at it and your eyes go, there's something wrong here. And it, it's hard to shake even if you don't know what exactly is wrong. So I try to pay a lot of attention to the, uh, the structure of the horse as a whole. Um, there, when I had gone to go search something and then pulled those legs, uh, what I was looking up was how to work with the dying topo mode, um, which is dynamic topology, um, which means that um, when you're using a tool, it either adds or takes away polygons depending on how close or how far away you are to the object, um, which sounds really complicated and irritating, which is why I haven't messed with it until now. Uh, but it's useful in some circumstances where you'll want to put, you know, extra details on the face or you're going to stretch out a leg like that or something and you need it to add extra polygons as you pull it so it doesn't get as try like um, as stretched, you know, um, so it can be useful in certain scenarios, but, uh, it, it, it's also something you have to fiddle with and, and learn how to use. I don't know that I've learned how to use it a hundred percent yet, but yeah, I'm definitely adding it into my repertoire here. Here I'm doing the feet, or uh, the, the, the hooves of this filly, and I really enjoyed working on these because for a lot of my other projects I have had a base hoof that I sculpted a long time ago um, that I just imported into the project and added to the horses um, and I don't really think that that was sculpted as well as I was able to you know sculpt um, I really didn't pay enough attention to the angles of the pasterns and everything and each horse is different um, you can see on the the weanling kind of stock horses like this they've bred to um, they, they've been bred to have these like real tiny little dainty hooves and I really enjoyed sculpting those um, they're, they're really fun. They, they, you're kind of up on your toes with these hooves and the way that the pasterns are angled and the way that the hooves themselves are angled I find really interesting. Um, and so that's that's what I'm, I'm sculpting here. And I actually uh, practiced doing the texture of the hooves with the grow rings on a different horse um, that I... I did actually record part of doing that, but it's not in this video. Um, but I found a new kind of technique for adding texture before I was using the draw sharp tool and just drawing lines into the hooves, but it made them look kind of, um, I don't know how you say, say it, like lumpy. Um, they just didn't look quite right. So now what I do instead is um, I add up onto the hoof instead of taking away from it. Um, I take the draw sharp tool and I invert it and I draw the lines in instead and then I take this scrape tool and go over the top of those lines um, and scrape them so it looks like a flat hoof and it looks much better than the way I had been doing it. Um, I did post a, a reel on Instagram where I'm working on that hoof. So if you want to see just a, a little short fast video of, of what I'm talking about, you can go over there. This is another one of my, the, the, the tool that I had just used here is another one of my favorite ones. Um, it's called Pinch. 
And uh, what what I have a tendency to do is when I'm sculpting a limb, like a leg, or you know, a neck, or something that needs to be thin, you know, I tend to over thicken it. Um, when I'm adding in muscles and things like that, you kind of need to start out a little exaggerated so you can get all the details in there. And then I just take the pinch tool and I zoom out and I just pinch those little legs till they get the thinness that they're supposed to have and then they look dainty again instead of you know big balloony um, I'm also using a lot of the pose tool I uh, I know I've talked about that before but you know when you're working on limbs that you're posing be sure that you are rotating them at a joint of the horse which I think is really important um, you kind of have to know how a horse moves when you are sculpting um, in a 3D medium. You have to be able to picture how they walk and uh, how they jump and how they run um, in your head while you're working on these little limbs and such. Because you need to, even if you're looking at a reference photo and you see how the horse looks in that pose, you need to be able to know how to move the limbs at the axes while you're working on this project so that um, you don't pull anything out of proportion, out of a place where it's supposed to be, you know. I don't know if that made any sense, but... <laughs> I am just loving these little hooves. This is like the reason that I wanted to sculpt a horse like this. Her, um, her big booty and then also her little bitty hooves. It's adorable. I love it. I'm going to um, hopefully be printing this one in traditional scale. Uh, I'd love to do traditional scale first on this one. Um, if my caster is feeling better, he had surgery uh, a couple weeks ago. So if he's feeling better and uh, he's willing to cast something again for me in a couple months, um, that's, that's where she's going first. Um, so hopefully I'll get her finished before that. I I, I had surgery myself about a, a month ago, and so I didn't um, work on anything sculpting for that entire time. And uh, I, uh, I tried to get back on about four days after I had surgery to work on this horse in specific, and I, I worked on her face, and it just looked terrible because I didn't have the hand-eye coordination that I usually did. Um, so th this today is now the first time I'm really getting back to looking at any of my sculpting, um, any of my other projects besides Brontes who I've been shipping out um, so that I can start planning for, you know, what's next. And yes, I do pretty much <laughs> go into uh, full detail on the back legs before I even give her a head or stump feet on the front. <laughs> um, but that's just how I kind of work, you know. When you're working on things like this, you, you want to work on what you see. You know, if you're looking at something and you're like, I know that that's wrong, and you want to fix it, uh, just go ahead and fix it then because you'll forget about it and then you'll print the horse and look at it and go ah oh, damn I was gonna fix that but I was you know going in order so I didn't do it just do it <laughs> it's uh that's that's a much better way to work my, my mom always told me you know the best way to keep a house clean is to uh to pick stuff up as you make a mess you know like as soon as you're done with the bowl put it in the sink as soon as you drop something on the floor sweep it up uh of course i'm very bad at keeping up with that in my own home but uh it, it feels relevant to this you know as soon as you you see something that's messed up fix it now the inside of the legs i find more challenging to sculpt than the outside because it's usually harder to find reference photos that show the full inside of the leg which is why i chose this one on the left um, because it does show some of the inside of the leg and uh i uh i, I wanted to work with photos that showed me um things correctly you know um I spent a lot of time on this foot. I'm sorry if you get bored. <laughs> uh, but uh, if 
you want to purchase one of my sculptures, I know that there are some people who watch these here who don't follow me. Um, you can look at the little link, or not link, the, the little uh, ads that I have up in the left corner of the screen. Uh, you can go to my Facebook, you can go to my Instagram, um, you can see I, I sculpt a lot of stuff that I don't post on this YouTube channel. Um, I have a traditional size, um, so 1-9 scale uh, resin available for sale right now, Brontes. Um, I'm just getting my first copies packed up to send out to everybody uh, today, actually. I'm really excited about it. He's a, a really, really dynamic sculpture. Um, so if you want a copy, just message me on any of those sites. Now chests I have problems with sometimes, especially on the sides. Um, it's very important to get the muscles layering over top of each other correctly, and stock horses are, are very muscular um, in general, so you really have to pay attention to the shape, and it, it's hard to get that shape in there correctly when you're not looking at multiple angles, you know, when you don't have a horse that you can rotate and turn. The underside of a horse, you know, too, is one of those areas where it's hard to get reference photos. So you kind of just have to memorize what it's supposed to look like, and then if it's some sort of outlier, like an older horse or a pregnant horse or something, then you can go grab um, more reference photos for that. Another thing I struggle with when I'm sculpting here is that, um, you know, I will, will sculpt the whole horse looking at the reference photos and, you know, deepening all the marks to the level that I see in the reference photos. And then after I do my first test print, I always realize, oh dang, I, you know, I had to go deeper. I, you, when you're printing, you have to dig deeper on the model and make more of an indent with your marks than looks correct when you look at it on the screen. You have to really kind of dig in there and uh, get those marks deep so they show up when you print. Um, and that's something I've had to learn and I'm definitely going to have to go back on this model and, and deepen the lines and the legs and everything because, you know, you, you, you want it to show up when you print. You want it to look crisp like it does on your screen, so you have to over-exaggerate a little bit. See here's where I'm, I'm starting to figure out where the muscles overlap. Um, I realized that, that that front leg muscle, I'm not using the correct terms, <laughs> um, went over top of the muscle in the front and not the other way around. So I kind of filled that spot in and changed how they overlapped. Hopefully no one is offended by the fact that I scope genitals onto these horses because I do realism. I don't, I don't really care if anybody cares, but it's, you know, it, 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 it weirds people out apparently, but, uh, yeah. I, uh, I really, really enjoy sculpting, and, and I, I get to enjoy watching these videos um, at the same time that you guys do. This is the third time I've watched this one to get ready to talk about it, but um, it, it is interesting to, you know, see my own process and see how I go about <laughs> doing this, um, because this was, you know, probably four hours of sculpting. And when you're, you know, working on it, you don't really think about what you're doing and what order you're doing it in. I mean, in general, you have a plan, but... I also had somebody else the other day in my story ask me if I start from a drawing when I sculpt. And I see a lot of other artists put, um, <coughs> put uh, photos 
behind their sculpting projects as they're sculpting. I know Maggie Bennett does that. Um, but I don't do that. I don't draw the horse out on a piece of paper or anything like that. Generally, I get inspired by photos. I never make a horse based on just one reference photo because that's not... Um, I mean, you can get copyright infringed for that if the pose is something really unique. Um, so I always get like 75 <laughs> reference photos to work from, but usually I get inspired by a photo. I see it and I go, oh, I want to do, you know, something like that. I love the breed of horse, or I love the pose, or I love the way, you know, this, this, and this. Um, and then I just have a picture in my head of, of what pose I want and I work from there, you know, and it doesn't always look at the end exactly like I pictured it, um, but I feel like if I have a drawing or, you know, a specific photo or something, then that's going to keep me trapped to, you know, a pose that may not work. Um, drawing is a lot different than a sculpture. It may look really nice on paper, but the pose not look realistic in practice, and I don't want to tie myself down to that, you know? My cats are fighting over the hammock that's right next to me. They have little cat hammocks in the window. There are two of them, and Junebug and Siri are both in the same one, and they don't like it. <laughs> Hey, you little bastards. A lot of leg work on this one. Legs used to be one of the things that are the hardest for me on, um, on, on my sculptures. Um, the hardest would probably have to be hair. Um, just for look and because printing it is perilous. Um, but <clears throat> legs were the part that I had the most trouble making look good. Um, that's the one thing on Brontes that I am still wishing that I, you know, gone back and fixed. I think he's gorgeous. His face is super detailed. He's lovely. But there are still some tiny things about his legs I would have tweaked if I had been able to see what I, you know, needed to see. But um, you can see, see on this little little cult to the left, uh, the, the reason that I'm calling this sculpt Big Booty Judy because quarter horse and stock foals tend to grow butt first. <laughs> they, uh, they get really butt high and they have tons of muscles and I, I just think it's adorable. It's an adorable name. And I did a whole fake um, DNA or, you know, uh, registration paper lineage for this foal where I list all of her ancestors and how she got the name Big Booty Judy from, you know, related names down her line. It was very fun to do, <laughs> and I hope that I will get to make a little, you know, COA with that on it for her when I eventually sell her. I'm excited about it. Hopefully I'll get to show the entire sculpting of this full from the beginning to the end, beside those first like 16 seconds. Um, I'm going to work on some more later today, um, try to get a, a face on this full. And uh, I really look forward to enjoying uh, or showing you the entire process from beginning to end. Um, I know that there are... A lot of people who don't understand how it works don't know, you know, what goes into making these horses, and uh, it makes me really happy to be able to share my process. I enjoy it. And uh, I know that I've had a lot of people tell me that it inspires them to work on things themselves, and that just makes me feel so good. Um, I, uh, I just want, you know... Uh, people to feel like they can keep making cool things because I want to buy your cool things so <laughs> I 
I feel like every time I put a new video up here, I look back on the old ones and go, oh my goodness, I know so much more now. So um, if you're thinking about getting into this and you think, oh my god, this thing I'm making is so fucking ugly, how can you, you know, do something like this with the same program? Um, the reason that I can do that is because this is like the 40th horse I've sculpted in this program, and only about eight of them are going to make it to production. Um, and, and that's how it is sometimes, you know, you gotta kind of start like that. Um, one of my favorite things about digital sculpture is that I can do what I'm about to do to this horse face right here. <laughs> and not mess up my horse. There he is. Nightmare fuel. Wonderful. <laughs> um, but as you can see with the head and the shape here, um, I just start with the profile shape and then I'm going to um, fix the width on the front view to make it fit, you know, front view shape. Um, but if you, you know, if you just start on one side, um, it's, it's easier to just start that way and, and then make it make sense in the other dimension too. That's another nice thing about digital sculpture is that, you know, you can pull things that you've sculpted. You don't have to like sand them off and then re-sculpt them if you made it too thin. Um, as you can see on the left, I have a huge folder full of references for this horse. Just absolutely ginormous because you never know which references you're going to need like there may be one photo with a tiny little shot of a knee that you need desperately to be able to see to sculpt so I end up with a folder with like 142 pictures for this one horse and then afterwards I will probably never use the folder again even if I do another horse of the same breed because I will want fresh photos <laughs> so they don't look the same. I'm weird. I'm... I mean, this is how I reference. I think references are super important. Um, I do not advocate sculpting without a reference. Unless you're doing like a fantasy animal, um, but at the same time I'd still look at stuff. Um, that's just my personal opinion, because I feel like if you're sculpting without a reverence, then you are instilling bad habits in yourself. Um, you're sculpting by memory, and what you remember may not be correct. But I really like the, uh, the little stance of this foal. The little pose is adorable to me. There's something I always kind of mess up is I always forget that there is, uh, you know, a stretchy skin between the inside of the leg and the chest. I always end up having to add that back into every horse once I see it in a photo. And that's why I don't sculpt from memory because I would forget that. I always forget it when I'm working early on Then I have to add it back in. And towards the end here of this. I'm gonna get another um, installment of the sculpting of this full out soon, I hope. Um, after I worked on her face the other day, it just did not look great. So... There's another good use of the pinch tool. I like to do little details like the wrinkles um, and then pinch them smaller and thinner so they look finer. I'll definitely have to go back over those before I uh, print because they probably won't be deep enough to show up very well on the underside of the horse. Um, but, oh, they should be fine if I deepen them a little bit. Sorry, I'm tired. I woke up early this morning. I hope that my commentary here hasn't been super boring this time. I feel like I said a lot in my last couple videos that I don't really need to rehash again. Um, here I really like how I got the face of the shape before I messed it up afterwards. Um, I really like the, the, the delicateness. I, I was going for, you know, the kind of uh, paradoxical 
really muscular and at the same time very delicate uh, weanling uh, stock horse. That's what I really like and what I really wanted. Um, something kind of, you know, Pars Dream Doll esque, but yeah, obviously not looking at that one or making it the same pose or anything like that. But I, I've always wanted a, a Dream Doll resin, and I I just love the whole look of the the stock horse weanling. And I feel like there should be more of them in the hobby, so I wanted to make another one. And I'm coming up right up on the end here where I stop for the day on the sculpting project. Um, I am going to show some photos of Brontes at the end here. Um, he is for sale now. Um, I put a lot of love into this horse. I think he's a really beautiful dynamic sculpture. He is cast in white resin, hollow with wire in his legs, um, and he has a beautiful detailed base that I made. Uh, if you would like to go buy him, you can message me on any of my sites. And thank you for watching, um, and I hope you will subscribe and come back and continue watching. I will have more videos out soon. Thank you so much.